Okay, we're recording and welcome to the community call on the 4th of June 2024. My gosh, it only felt like January a few weeks ago, but here we are in June. Um, uh, so um, I'm going to be chairing, I'm Nicholas, and uh, Martin's going to be taking the notes as well. Uh, and uh, hopefully um, you can all see the uh, document that we're using as our uh, agenda. Um, please fill in your name, just so we know who's been here. Um, and the first item on the agenda is introductions. If this is your first time here, um, just say hi, because we're all kind of like friendly here. So I know there's at least one person. Uh, well, I know there is one person who's never been here before. So bouncing, would you like to <laughs> say hi? Hi. Uh, yeah, I just I saw the announcement on Discord and thought I'd pop in and I don't know, just observe. <laughs> yeah. Great stuff. Um, and uh, just uh, the next item is announcements. Uh, just so that you know, uh, we hope Andrea and I. Um, uh, assuming we've not got drunk at the pub beforehand, uh, to do a. Uh, uh, a release of PyScript tomorrow evening at, uh, and here's the second part of the announcement, uh, at uh, the Python uh, Milan uh, user group meetup, um, which is happening tomorrow evening. So if you're in the area of Milan tomorrow evening, uh, come say hi to, uh, to at least three of us on this call. Um, and afterwards, we might even go out and have some pasta together and some good times as well. Uh, now, I know what's coming, and uh, I can tell you that uh, the uh, demo that Andrea has prepared is like uh, one, watching one of those chefs, master chefs on TV. You know, it's, he's going to be sprinkling bits of onion and frying it with olive oil, and it's going to be, you know, risotto just like... Uh, uh like like granny used to make sort of thing okay yeah martin will be doing an awesome presentation is what it now says in the in the, in the uh in the notes uh, that have been created uh, no pressure um so uh with the announcements out uh out of the way uh assuming there are no more announcements that are ad hoc um uh, we're on to the agenda items and there are only two uh, the first one uh being martin uh who has uh, module naming thoughts re pi script to pi web, pi dom, pi all the things. So I'll take over as the note keeper now. All right. <clears throat> so this was kind of just just thoughts on how we currently how we present pi web and pi dom and pi script in the module naming thoughts. I've chatted with Fabio the Elder about this. Chatted with Nicholas this morning about this, and there was a couple of things in the PR that. That Nicholas has just put up there. I think that's the one. Uh, Fabio is the one. Yeah. But um, and so we've got we've got pi web dot pi, and then pi dot pi dom, and then we've got pi web dot ui dot elements, and the thought of this went in two stages. Could we simplify a the number of pies that we put in? It with inside Pi Web. So could we say from Pi Pi Web dot dom and Pi Web, and then do we really need the dot UI before elements? Because it's all the UI because we're doing Pi Web, right? It's all the user facing stuff. So could it be Pi Web dot elements? This was the this was so. Could we have Pi Web dot dom, Pi Web dot elements, and then? Um, and then Nicholas had a further suggestion. He says, well, why do we need even the PyWeb namespace then? Why can't we have PyScript.dom, PyScript.elements? Um, and um, it, it, it might be helpful just to explain to people who may not be aware of what PyWeb and PyDom are. Yeah, okay, yeah. So Py, PyDom is um, something which Fabio is the primary maintainer of, Fabio the Elder. And it's basically a jQuery style DOM manipulation, low level tool, but written in Python. So you can do all your DOM manipulations like query selectors, collections of elements, um, and things like that. It's very low level. And then pyweb.ui.elements right now puts a, a Pythonic wrappers around the JavaScript, uh, sorry, around HTML elements so that you can create them. Instead of writing HTML, you can just 
pr create a, a button or a div in, in actually Python code. So you write Python code to do it. So we've got these different namespaces. And then the thought was just, my thought was just about, um, you know, in talks with Nicholas and Fabio is how can we tidy these things up? And then also in a later date, there's the like clean namespaces one and the number two, how can we have potential selective inclusion of those things? If for example, you, you want PyScript, but you don't want the, the DOM or the elements collections. So that was that was it really just thoughts to bring that up and, and my thought was maybe it's kind of like good to get this sorted sooner rather than later obviously because namespace changes will break people so sorry andrea you'll be very patient then um yes can i quickly share my screen please go for it so uh, um i think two reasons for having a different namespace. The first one is that we have two different folders with two different init. Um, it's not matching it, <laughs> to be honest <laughs> with the well, so maybe this is not the best reason for it, but it will create um, a sort of expectation that everything is going to land into the PyScript namespace. Um, I don't have a strong opinion about this, about getting rid of other namespace because we, it feels like we keep polluting with by something mm. um, our standard lib. At the same time, we had uh, the ability to ignore part of it. Um, this is currently what our code does because in the standard lib, the PyWeb wasn't working in MicroPython. Right. So instead of breaking everything, um, we decided that that specific uh, folder shouldn't be part of the standard lib in case it's MicroPython. And so we have this ability to ignore specific uh, standard lib folders. And if we put everything into PyScript, um, it's, it's, it's going to be harder, or if possible at all, to ignore this because it's gonna end up in the in it, and so at the end uh, we're gonna expose the Python PyWeb, however you wanna call it, in there. So yeah, this is just some background that we should consider because this was a great feature. Now with the current merge request from Fabio, we have this, so it means we are not ignoring anything because everything apparently works um, in MicroPython too. But for the future, if we put everything inside the same init, when somebody imports something from PyScript, then it's, let's say, less flexible. Or at that point, we can get rid already of the standard lib folder if everything comes from the same standard lib. Um, that's it for me, actually, about this topic. But I don't have I, uh, strong opinions and uh, about simplifying the namespace, I think is a good mm. idea, but I don't find particularly problematic right now to to have a PyWeb DOM and a PyWeb elements um, made that, that worked so far and probably it will keep working. <laughs> so um, so I, I, I think I had my hand up first and then Martin um, for, for chat about this. Um, PyWeb and PyDOM, if you search on PyPI, both bring up name collisions with existing packages that happen to be called PyWeb and PyDOM. So when you're Googling around, uh, you're going to get the wrong thing if you're not careful. Um, which, uh, whereas if we put it all under PyScript dot something or other, dot web or dot DOM, at least we know whose uh, who's module it is, if you see what I mean. Um, if, it's I, I, if it's a dot, it can be in a folder. So if you PyScript dot something, yeah, uh, what, what's that's it? what it, that's as what it would be. It would be in its own folder. Yeah, exactly. Could, could we do? Could we do PyScript dot web dot dom PyScript dot web dot elements as a folder? I, th I think yes, and we can yeah. exclude that. We can ignore it eventually, not just for the web. But if we have in the future something that is very specific only for MicroPython or PyScript, maybe uh, sorry, PyODI, maybe. That's a good idea. So the, the, my concern is the folder structure, rather. Or right. yeah. do, not, do not put everything into the same uh, under yeah. boundary. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, I like that. Yeah, 
So yeah, how about that? So then we've only got one Pi, which is Pi script, and then yeah. it's dot web dot dom dot web dot elements. Yeah. I think maybe that's that's um plus one. Yeah. And the the the, the in it, uh, just because you know Andrea, uh, you know it's called in it because uh, that's where you look to see what's in it. Yeah, but the folder structure also matter, right? Okay, I'm pulling your leg. I'm pulling your leg. Yes, <laughs> Dunder in it here's, isn't. Here's a thought. Here's, here's a thought. Like, I didn't like the the UI part at least because we've currently we've got yeah. my web UI elements because I was like, well, it's all the UI. Right. Yeah. Right. But, maybe, but then again, you could say PyScript.web. You could say, well, to be fair, it's all about the web because that's what we do. Yeah. Right? <laughs> so maybe so you could also I could also see an argument for PyScript.ui.dom, PyScript.ui.elements instead of so it's the UI part of PyScript, not the functional part of PyScript to do with non-UI uh, but, things. But but this is all interactions with the browser. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Right. I mean, this is uh, th th naming's yeah, hard, isn't it? Um, you know, uh, pi script dot browser, pi script dot dom. I mean, we're all. It it's always just interacting with the dom. Um, yes, but but if we put it in an intermediate package, like it could be, like I said, it could be pi script dot web dot dom, pi script dot yeah. web dot elements, or pi script dot ui dot dom, or pi ui, or something else, right? Yeah, but um, it, 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 yeah. I mean, to me, the kind of the fly in the ointment is there's too many pie things, <laughs> um, yeah, so fly, way, flying all over the place. Uh, but if we are going to change that, we should change it once and <laughs> make sure we get the name right, rather than break everybody's yeah. code in the process. You know, in three months' time. Um, Andrea. So I feel like was missing here, uh, the elder, yes. and uh, it could be definitely part of this conversation. Yes. So we cannot reach consensus right now. I agree. Maybe we should, we should actually discuss this live, because otherwise it's just us saying, yeah, uh, yeah you are better than web and dumb. Maybe he has strong arguments against all of these, or maybe he's in favor of all of this. So. Yeah. But I agree yeah. that if we can have still a, a structure where I can ignore paths in the standard lib offered by uh, off there to either PyDide or MicroPython, and to me everything is fine. Yeah. We have this ability, and maybe we can use it in the future. Yeah, 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 yeah. So this is this is a very this is a good call, Andrea, because like you said, the guy who's actually supposed to be maintaining this isn't here. Uh, but you know, for the last ten minutes, he can at least see the sense of the conversation, and Fabio can you know we can talk about this in another in another in another call. Uh, hopefully on Discord, so everybody can take part in this. Um, okay, if it's okay with everyone, let's park that agenda item then. Um, yep. And uh, I'll just uh, put... It, let me guess, is this... No, it's not Fabio turning up. Um, and uh, we'll move on to the next item, the final item, which is Andrea and myself. Um, part of that... Well, I'll tell you what. Uh, Andrea, why don't you just go ahead and tell us what this is, because it's another naming request okay so i go ahead and share my screen again yeah <laughs> naming is art and it's gonna be more high things around um so nicholas told me i was chopping my video so i'm gonna drop my video for the time being while i'm sharing mm -hmm. I don't have to show you anything from this room um okay so topic I came prepared this time. I actually wrote a nice thing to discuss. <laughs> um, there is an utility. Uh, so the thing is, we have this config, which is awesome and everything. But if we put a lot of modules, because uh, a bigger application needs a lot of uh, Python modules, packages. Sorry, I call, pa I call modules because I, I'm more a JS person, but packages. Um, the bootstrap is inevitably slower. And um, this is not good because PyDive is not that slow, but of course, as soon as we bootstrap stuff and we don't have uh, any frozen uh, lock uh, environment, so yet, at least, there was a discussion with Hood about this, and hopefully we can move forward there. But right now, um, there are a lot of things that might land lazily, like when a user clicks something, 
example, basic example, matplotlib math is kind of slower to bootstrap if it's out of the box. Uh, if it comes after a, a click, then it's going to be slow the first time, the first click, but then it's going to be faster every other time. And so um, it has been requested by users in Discord for the ones how do I load dynamically stuff because we don't expose or there's no out of the box expose um, micro pip uh, or MIP um, in, in, uh, in micro Python. And also these two are completely different lists. And so um, I thought, okay, in PolyScript, let's, let's experiment this, this thing. And we have a lazy pie modules, which is the ugliest name I could think about, but PolyScript is not about UX, uh, VX, is rather about enabling experiments and stuff. Um, and so this works. So if I want to import later matplotlib or regex, wh whatever module I need at that time, one or more modules, I can await as if I modules all at once because it does this awesome feature where you can uh, ask for more than a module and that's cool because you can resolve dependencies across modules before asking repeatedly for the same thing over and over. And so um, this works pretty well. But we don't want to expose to 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 ask our users to use polyscript namespace because we provide PyScript, um, and and I'm not, nobody is super happy about this lazy by models thing. It's very verbose. It's just uh, probably semantic, but probably not the best we can offer to to our users. So we have discussed a few options. And the thing is that we already have, if we define a JS underscore module in a config, we already have the ability to export JS modules. And so we have from PyScript, JS module import this or that. Um, and we don't want to confuse our users about Py modules because we already have packages in the config. And so this is, this is why we are here, basically. So the first option is to call it Py modules um because it is ambiguous with what we have already which is js modules although in python modules are packages so i'm not sure this is the best we can do but uh, and also js modules comes from the config my modules comes from the runtime so i was the first one to propose this and i don't like it <laughs> the more i think about it the more i think it's not it's not the best we can do um the option number two is Py import. That's because PyUdide has PyUdide.py import package, which we are using to actually import packages. Um, and because users also asked to add a runtime JS modules, maybe because they want to provide a library and they want people to eventually write Python and add any dependent any JS dependency they like. Um, so we could have a counterpart, which is JS import. So we have py import for Python packages that are lazy loaded um, and JS import for JavaScript packages that are lazy loaded too. Um, option three is py package or py packages. I don't know about because it returns a tuple of um, packages. So you can ask more than a package uh, as in, as in py, UDID, py import. And, uh, and and also you can ask for more than a package a module in JavaScript. So I don't know if Py package would be best for the Python use case, but then it would be likely to have JS package or packages because the JS packages are modules. So again, naming is hard. And uh, as a quick um, example of how it's gonna look like, um, this is how. So we have from Py Scorp I skip import. I import, so I'm picking option two right now, the, the one um, with the import. Uh, import pi import, JS import, and now we can, I'm just using some metric to, to test that is actually, we're not bootstrapping the same packages more than once. And so here we have matplotlib and regex, um, and we are also keep importing it as if it was within an asynchronous uh, listener for the DOM, um, and we will see that this actually takes nothing, and this take, takes the time it needs to to actually resolve and import those models. And uh, there's no config, as you can see, there's no PyConfig, no config attribute at all. So this is all runtime stuff, 
um, at the end of the day, there is also uh, an asynchronous uh, JS module, just one. Uh, I could have more than one, but right now I was just testing that. Everything is fine. Is everything fine, Joe? Let's figure it out. So yeah, you can see that um, when I do that, uh, I have the first the first time I'm requiring runtime py py pilot modules, it takes three seconds. And uh, the next time it takes 150, 70 milliseconds just to resolve things internally. Understand that it was already, uh, it was already uh, not micropip, but no new package loads. And at the end of the day, this is nonsense. Uh, I'm just printing matplotlib or whatever they produce. And then at the end, I have my uh, um, HTML escaper as a, as a JS model. So basically, uh, the, 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 the usage. So using this utility works well. Um, the naming around this utility, uh, you tell me what you think about it. And that's, that's the discussion, basically. Great stuff. Great stuff. So uh, mm -hmm. I'm reminded of the classic joke when I was uh, in the UK, uh, working for the UK government, where they said, if you're trying to give a senior civil servant options, uh, what you should do is give the worst, worst possible option as the first one, the most expensive, insanely expensive one as the last option, and the one you what they really want to choose as the middle one. <laughs> <laughs> and if you can demo that middle one anyway, uh, just so they can see it already works, then then that's the one most. I I think we can clearly see which one Andrea prefers. But you know this is a discussion, so uh, uh, Fabio has his hand up. Yeah, sorry, I got it halfway. Um, oh, am I muted? No, no, nope. muted. Um, I got it halfway, so I may be off. So if I am, please tell me. Uh, as I think we're talking about polyscript level here, no, 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 right? No, no. Okay, level. let me let me let me do a quick reintroduction just for you, okay? <laughs> well, so, yeah, yeah, thirty yeah. seconds. That that's cool. Like I don't want to steal the the call time. Yeah. In Polyscript, we have this experimental thing. It's not experimental. It was just an enabler right. for this thing. So we can lazy load stuff, and it works. So it works so well that if I do um, py import matplotlib regups in PyScript, um, mm -hmm. it just works. It works out of box, no issue whatsoever. What we are discussing here is from PyScript, how should this be named? Okay. Py import, because you can have a mm -hmm. yeah, Counterpart, they, they are asking for this as well. Or should they be instead of pi imports, should they be pi modules, a package, by packages? And that was the long story short. Thank you. Yeah. So I just thinking out loud. I think trying to keep with familiar names is always preferred if those work already, and you 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 basically already have a larger part of the community that is used to those things. Um, hold on one second. So the in Python, I, what I would expect is that you have import lib and then you either done their import or import lib dot load module. So that I think for the Python community would be more, more familiar. Um, yeah. So import I, is... I understand. Oh, sorry. No, I was going to say Im import is the, is the name that both language communities use when they're talking about this sort of thing um so i think yep. and please correct me if i'm wrong i think what you're saying is that the second option where we do pi import and js import for dynamically importing these things is is the way to go no i'm saying that the, in the python ecosystem the default two are dunder import so you just use dunder import or you do um of um basically import module from um uh, so, from so you, import modules so you're suggesting that we use the the usual python the standard python import hooks to make it work like and that won't work though because this is doing something different this is actually downloading the module from pypi and then importing it for you whereas yeah. there might be a module on the file system the virtual file system within the browser that you do want to actually use the proper dunder import do the the thing dynamically so there'd be a kind of a clash of features there 
Right. I'm not suggesting the founder. Yes. I'm, I'm saying what are the, 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 the default, the traditional ways of Python, right? I'm not suggesting Thunder because it's too deep and I think the differences are going to be yeah, weird. Yeah, yeah. But I would look into load module, home price script mo import load, mo load module because it's mostly like the same as import lib. Um, I would actually look into how Pyodide is doing that as well. Uh, if yeah, if I import module... Right, like if import lib dot import module just works transparently in Pyodide, then it's also telling. Um, but yeah, I before looking at new, I would also look at what what is available today in the. Yeah, the we are trying to become the great with JS too. So whatever solution we comes up with it has to work in JS as well. And in, well, yeah, in, these are different things. So the data import a... works great in the in the in the Python code. Uh, that's that's the Python thing. So this is about using iodide.py import behind the scene. And in PyDite, because you asked how did they solve this, they use PyDite.py import and you import the package uh, from from uh, from from the uh, PyDite uh, utility. No, no, that's that's not what I asked. Uh, at least not, not what I me I meant to ask. I meant to say I would be curious to see how like if import lib dot load module just works the same as pi import in Pyodide, right but but they're doing different things it's, though it's asynchronous here so it's inevitably asynchronous and it has to work with a weight yeah. and it has to provide more things at the same time because that's how the Pyodide pi import works so we need to look at what they can do and that's what they can do so yeah don't, okay don't... i'm not making my point we we can we can post that on that later. Um, <laughs> he wants to was... tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, we. This is the thing we wanted. We want this decision so we can release tomorrow. Um, I I mean I'm not opposite to Pi import to be honest. I I think it has benefits in being the same as JavaScript. Um, it doesn't matter. Still... So anything else works as long as it's clear as long that as... you. At runtime, asynchronously can import one or more package. Uh, yes. Or fetch. I fetch. I don't know. I don't know. By load. Load package. I, I, the name is, is what we are discussing here, not the functionality. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I th that What I mentioned about Pyodide, how import modules, import lib dot import modules in Pyodide, I meant to say it would be good to highlight the differences between how the import lib dot pi mod, uh, import modules behave differently than pyodide pi import those are two options that should be available in pyodide because the default language supports import lib so understanding those two differences is a good um but, but... It, it's probably a question that users will have where should i use one or the other so you cannot use what Pyodide offers because you need to add to the to the Pyodide runtime. You need to add those modules from the internet. Yeah. So not about the file system right now. It's about fetching modules. Oh, okay. You're talking about fetching. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Then yes. Then I missed the, <laughs> the core of the. Fabio, here's a big hug. Here's a big hug. <laughs> Never mind. Never mind. Sorry about that. <laughs> Pi import looks good to me. Bravo. Okay, we have an answer. If everybody else is happy with Pi import and JS import, um, bouncing, are you happy oh, with that? Because you were you were asking for the JS import functionality. Yeah, uh, that sounds very convenient. I, mine was a passing question anyway. But... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, as long as everyone's happy, that's the main thing. Cool. Okay, so we have an answer. Uh, <laughs> I love it. Right at the very bottom of all the notes, Martin's written TLDR. <laughs> Pi import is the winner. You could have put that at the top. Um, so, <laughs> uh, so we have a conundrum now because our first item was one in which we needed Fabio <laughs> to have a discussion about something to do with naming. Um, we've already discussed it, um, but since you're here, um, 
I don't think anyone would be offended uh, in the Pasuk team if folks thought, well, you know, I've been in that conversation already. Let's, uh, you know, let's drop off the call. But uh, Fabio, if it's OK with you, we can go revisit that first item. Um, and Martin, uh, would you like to just recap on, on, on what was said uh, about that? Yes. <clears throat> Thank yes. you. So we were like Fabio. We were talking yesterday about the PyWeb.UI, PyDom namespaces, all that kind of things. So we had a chat, had a little chat with Nicholas this morning, and we're just coming up with. And then we brought it up in the call earlier. And basically, the idea is to we want to clean up the namespaces for PyWeb, PyDom, and we also want to make sure that we can um, selectively include those potentially if someone says, "Hey, I want PyScript, but I don't want it anything else." So um, one of the, so we started off. The journey was um, so one one of the other things is, is reducing the number of pies, <laughs> right? So we don't have pyweb dot and uh, and so on. And so the first suggestion was we've got pi like yesterday. Me and you talked about pyweb dot. Uh, well, we talked about pyweb.pydom, but then we thought, well, what, why do we need the pydom? Why not pyweb.dom, py, pyweb.elements for the starter? Then it was like, hmm, but if you don't, someone's already got pyweb on pypy, pypi, sorry. And so then we're like, why can we have, uh, so then we suggested pyscript.dom, pyscript.elements. So that's nice and short. And Drea mentioned, uh, actually, that makes it a little bit tricky. We don't really want to have an ugly, like, folder structure, like, pollute the folder structure in PyScript. And so then we've got an easy way to, like, exclude things. So then it was like, why not have PyScript.web.dom, PyScript.web.elements? And then the, then I also suggested, well, why not go back to PyScript? Why not PyScript.ui.dom and PyScript.ui.elements since it's all web? You're probably chuckling because if you've gone through all these discussions before. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Um, we've gone through all those discussions before. Um, I, I honestly don't have any attachment to any of it. Um, the reason it was initially DOM, not PyDOM. And then there was a strong argument against it because, oh, what DOM is it? Is it PyScript DOM? Is it the JS DOM? What, what you know, was confusing for some people. So we we reverted to PyDOM. The PyWeb namespace was pretty much to separate with the PyScript one uh, because of also being able to exclude um, parts of the, the library and whatnot. And also to not put it in the standard library right away because it needs some exploration with users and other things like that. Um, Again, I, I one thing that I'm strongly, super strongly in favor is remove the additional layer, like what we discussed yesterday. Um, not remove UI, so PyWeb dot something elements and whatnot. Um, the rest is really, uh, I think, I don't like the names that we have today, to be honest. So if we can improve, great. Andrea, sorry. Your very first statement made me laugh a little bit uh, with all due respect because you, you, you said, what is DOM? Is it PyScript DOM or is JavaScript DOM? Uh, what Martin suggested is how about we have PyScript.DOM so there's no confusion about yeah. what is it. It's exactly the PyScript DOM. So I actually think that's, that's awesome. And the other thing is, uh, uh, what I suggest is that we have a DOM folder inside the PyScript module, so it doesn't have to be in the same init as its own things, and we can still ignore eventually in the future for whatever thing we want to ignore, because you already changed the ignore, don't ignore it anymore because it works in MicroPython. So we can still ignore in the future if we have a proper folder structure and we have proper sub modules within the PyScript namespace. So I think PyScript DOM would actually work well but if you prefer PyScript DOM web uh, or anything else I'm, I'm okay with it too but the, but it, the, about the question what is PyScript uh, what is DOM PyScript DOM yes it's PyScript DOM so that that works for me yeah yeah that's honestly that's not a my question that was something that people were asking for uh because also putting in the PyScript namespace meant right away it's in the standard library 
Um, but we can change that. Actually, one of the things that that was we can we can ignore we can ignore even sub modules just just to be yeah 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 now we can <laughs> we could not earlier right yeah um, the other thing someone actually I remember one of the many conversations around this one thing that I actually didn't dislike I think there's some merit to it like DOM is a technical term right and it doesn't really relate to folks if you're if you're not a web person so some people were like well can we have a more meaningful name I think one of them that was suggested was page right because you're querying things in the page um, I don't have a I don't have a strong opinion other than I like something more segment semantically meaningful to users dumb is not something that is semantically meaningful if you don't have web uh, knowledge Nicholas yeah uh, pe okay so we have um, navigator browser and other kind of things in the JavaScript world that off which things hang um, I I'm playing devil's advocate deliberately here Fabio as well because I'm personally I'm not sure because uh, I care very much about having meaningful names especially if you're a beginner and things like that um, uh, and Dom you know just sounds like a bloke called Dominic um, but for anybody who's been around the web world for more than half an hour, Dom then becomes a particular name that has a particular meaning. And perhaps one of the things we can assume is that if you are working at this level in PyScript, you're not a complete beginner and you would understand what Dom is. And it's a nice, sensible name within the context of, uh, of, of, of the web. Um, so I'm going to cede the floor to bouncing as well. That's basically what I wanted to say. Yeah, I mean, I, I guess I just wanted to mention that I, I've really only used PyScript from docs, and I haven't dug much into the code. So when I was essentially trying to figure out how to manipulate the DOM, my first instinct was to just import what I needed from JS and use it directly and create all my proxies and stuff. Then I noticed the DOM kind of helper section, I guess it's called DOM in JavaScript. Um, and when I stumbled across that, I did kind of immediately assume I was getting either like mini DOM in the Python standard library or the actual JavaScript DOM, which is not super convenient to work with. And actually, I, I never saw this UI module at all. And it, it sounds really interesting. So I'm going to look for it after the meeting. But, uh, so the UI module is, 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 is going to be merged right now or uh, in a uh, <laughs> very shortly but the pydom one has has been around but honestly that is not even like the, the pydom module is really just a query interface to the dom pretty much like it it could be pi query it, to, right it, or jquery like right like the, the pi query version of jquery um so dom it has a couple of convenience uh, convenient uh, attributes there, but the, the bulk of it is how can I query the DOM or the page, whatever, for uh, the document for the, the oh. element that I'm looking for. Let, let me give you an example, though, of where it, it could be more, not to say that it is or has to be, but earlier today I was trying to figure out, I had a, an object in from the browser that is an element and I was looking at node type to figure out what element it is, like node type equals one equals a regular tag, that kind of thing. And it would be more Pythonic to check is instance, is instance element tag or, or whatever the case is. Like there, there's a lot of ways the regular JavaScript DOM besides querying is not very convenient, especially for Python programmers. And the mini DOM inside Python standard library improves on a lot of that, although it's it's really old. I think it was brought in from Twisted like 10 years ago. Um, but just speaking personally, a little bit more of a Pythonic interface for the DOM generally would be super convenient. So, okay, actually, let me ask you, 
I think you hinted, but I, I'm not sure I really followed. What would you expect from a more Pythonic interface? Uh, well, so strictly speaking, like you have child nodes, I think, in the JavaScript interface, and then that is, I think, an array, and you you have some mismatched data structures. I haven't used the DOM a ton in in some time, but um, you also you can't do real tests on whether any particular node is of any type using an idiom that a Java that a Python developer would be familiar with, like looking at what instance, what class instance it is. Um, there are getters and setters that are methods you call, as opposed to just getting and setting a property like you would with a, a normal Python class. So, so you, what you're saying is is mini DOM is a, a, a classic Pythonic way of manipulating the DOM and something closer to that than the JavaScript DOM is what you as a Python developer would prefer to see in terms of the API and the way it works. Yeah, I mean, I, mean, I guess they both have the advantages because besides being the JavaScript DOM, I think it's actually a, a standard that exists. There is even XML.DOM in yeah. Python that's a completely different from the mini DOM. Yeah. And then Java has the same thing and it you at least know what you're getting. It's kind of the devil you know, right? Yeah. But it's not very convenient. And mini DOM is much more convenient. Yeah. I mean you you can always get to the DOM uh, via the from PyScript import document. Um, which will get you yeah. the document object anyway. Um and, and what you're getting is a JavaScript proxy object with all the JavaScript stuff falling off it. So what we don't want to do is just re-implement that, but in Python, because you might as well just use the, the FFI and the proxies to, to get that, I, I guess. Um, but, uh, yeah, right. it, it, yeah. it, I mean, you, you could even use like a dictionary keys on like a Python object, say, that would get children by ID or query selector. Like there, there's a lot of kind of clever syntactic stuff you can do in Python that's just not part of the DOM. Um, so, I mean, I'm not trying to like interlope here and tell you how to write anything. It's just, I'm pointing no, out no, that no. The, the DOM could be way more convenient than it is. Yes, I, I yeah, I really, I'm really trying to understand the use case to see, well, how much of it is actually aligned with what we're thinking and, and vice versa. Like in general, like <laughs> curiously, I don't find mini DOM that much Pythonic, most of or modern Python, mostly because it's old and it's heavily influenced by XML and and the DOM, right? So you have a lot of the the, the many you know create document, create element, create text, and in a way that I think it's very old school Python. Um, but again. Um, I uh, guess it, it really, uh, Nicholas. No, no, sorry. I I thought you'd finished and then you started again and stopped. And stopped. So no, you finished what you were going to say. Yeah, I, I guess I think to me, what I'm mainly interested right now is to get what we have in front of most users possible to get feedback and actually yeah. iterate on a more Pythonic interface. That uh, it, it is intentionally not trying to mimic the web or, or have the same interface of JavaScript and not other Python tools. It's trying to get inspiration from jQuery, Pandas, and other like uh, more modern Python tools. But again, it's it's only good if it's good at the eyes of our users, right? So that's my main main goal. Yeah, it's uh, that there are two things I was going to say. The first one is that there's a kind of tension here because a we want to get it in front of users. But then, you know, so we can get feedback. But then if you put it in front of users, people start using it. Um, and then if they start using it <laughs> and you change it, then they're going to start complaining. So uh, so there's that kind of attention going on there. But secondly, th this feels like another one of those uh, Marc-Andre Lemberg paradoxes where you ask, you know, what's the answer to X in Python? 
And Marc Andre will say, well, everybody's got such a different opinion that the only answer is that there is no answer because everybody has a different opinion. So it's like, what's Pythonic? Pythonic is in the eye of the beholder. You know, mini DOM to one Python programmer is Pythonic. To another one, it, it, it isn't. It's just uh, it's just because there are different tastes. Um, in which case, how do you resolve that? Well, you go back to the first tension where you start showing people stuff. And if most people go, yeah, that looks all right to me, then you've kind of got the answer that you need. But then we're back in that kind of catch 22. of Well, now we need to change it because people have given us feedback and things. So then it becomes a change management process as, as the code matures. Yeah. Maybe it's worth actually, let me just show real quick what what the interface is to this. We look at the same thing, right? Um, and it shouldn't I type a few things together if you saw if everyone's got the chat open i just put i just put a bunch of other suggestions just just thinking out loud or thinking out loud as i typed ah yeah perfect thank you thank you thank you thank you so this is actually the current pr that we need to merge right and uh, but python didn't change much so if i do this python literally is a query interface so i can check what what gives i have in the dom returns a collection i can do things like um uh now i'm gonna break everything but here's oh fabio <laughs> it's the end of the afternoon here mate <laughs> What color you prefer? Um, <laughs> British. I don't know. Anyway, uh, this. Um, what did you try yesterday, uh, Martin? That was convenient as well. Uh, oh, like if I want to do. Uh, uh, now the the PyWeb interface, which is a little different, that interfaces with the, the PyDOM one. So from PyWeb. button I can do also I don't um, I think like this awesome. so this is you know the attempt of a more Pythonic interface um, and I, I try to avoid all those um, create elements, like all the ah, more imperative um, methods in favor of using Python features like getters, setters, uh, slicing, and stuff like that. But it may not be intuitive as well. I don't know. I, um, Fabio, I really love this API. The only thing I would say is I want to go from PyScript import DOM from PyScript import mm -hmm. elements and then do everything the way that you've just done it. Um, and and that to me would be, you know, chef's kiss type. Yeah. Um, so you mean like, like something like this? Uh... Yeah. And then that. Uh... Oh, sorry. I need to put a, a list. And actually, Martin and I have been talking about this as well to change to args. Uh, yeah, I was going to say uh, args it and quags it. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, yeah, the gist of it is really you now can do. Yeah, I mean, I, it's so quick for me to start faffing about with the DOM, uh, where faffing <laughs> means it's an experimental, playful way of, you know, this is great. This is just what I want, yeah. you know. But that's exactly. just what. That's, yeah. But the, the but the Mark Andre Lemberg paradox applies here because I like this, but other people might hate it. If you see what I mean, but exactly. Uh, and there you have some convenient stuff like uh, children. And then yeah, if you loop to uh, for, I don't know. Oh, is that a bug? Because you're saying new div has two divs as children and it should surely be a button and a paragraph yeah um could be could be 
it is probably a bug um like live debugging in our in our community call there yeah. you go folks yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. Ah, sorry not new node i think the type is wrong but it reflect the underlying type should be right um Ah, I can't type today. Okay, this should also be a bug. In theory, you should be able to iterate over an element. It should return your um, children. Your, your yeah. Children. Okay. Uh, but one thing I wanted to check here. Yeah, it, it's just a type bug. Yes. Yeah. On the page, it it, it, it is what it is. Yeah. Awesome. Anyway, that's the current state. That's the attempt on the API, right? Um, to try and create something that is easy, easy to understand, Pythonic in terms of relatable to pandas and other type of, of query mechanism. Yeah. So I'm being, again, apologies, being a bit teacherish here to try and kind of like herd the cats. Um, the the original. <laughs> 45 minutes ago, the original uh, <laughs> intent of this part of the call was uh, where are we going to stick this in the namespace um, in terms of naming? I mean, we've, we've spotted a, a couple of kind of, um, you know, little, little bugs that, you know, uh, appear to be very easy to fix. Um, but can this go as, um, you know, from PyScript import DOM and from PyScript import elements? What do people feel about that? PyScript.dom, PyScript.elements. PyScript.query, PyScript.elements. Yeah. Yeah, because the... Yeah. yeah the, the Well, yeah, I like the... Yeah, it works both ways, really. I'm thinking about when you read the code out, what does it say to you? You know, um, X equals query something... It gets me all the things back. So what am I getting? I'm a collection of results here. Um... Yeah, I don't. I think PyScript dot query. It honestly doesn't tell me query what. Right. Well, how about on, on like on my in the chat? I also put as a, another fi my last suggestion was put it all under DOM PyScript dot yeah, DOM dot documents. Yeah. I kind of like web more because we also have media and we have other things too. That's a very good point. Yeah, yeah, good point. Yeah, yeah. yeah so yeah. from so we've got a web namespace underneath PyScript, in which you would find a DOM object and elements, and then in the future media, media as well, like yeah. audio and video and speech and all the other kind of like weird and wonderful or media because you've got things like geolocation is another api that's asynchronous that you you know and that's not a media one we want to call it i don't know capabilities or uh, you know uh, sensors or i don't know media um I quite I like know. that. So, so what you're saying is pyscript.web.dom pyscript.web.elements pyscript.web.media PyScript.web.sensors, so dot you web dot uh, or IO or IO dot IO instead yeah. of sensors because the input is the geolocation. You know, you might have an output which is a USB serial uh, through that. You know, that's an input output thing. I'm trying to work out the the more generic names under which we can sort of shove stuff in a meaningful way. Um, uh, Andrea's just had his hand up for the last five minutes and he's been very, very patient. Andrea, my apologies. I should have noticed that. This is not for tomorrow. And I wonder <laughs> because this naming convention or the meaning of this, this namespace is for our users. If we could make a poll uh, somehow in Discord and ask our users any feedback about this. So it, it requires some context. I think web is good. Uh, but when we have media, uh, DOM media is ugly, and UI media is even worse. So I, I think web sums, is, sums it up yeah. uh, more than anything else. Yeah. Um, I like the PyScript doc but as, a, as a shortcut for document, I think, uh, Bouncing suggested. A doc, 
might be misleading to me as a as a uh, word word <laughs> document or I don't know. <laughs> so it's uh, it, it, it's weird because doc media also uh, doesn't really correlate too well. That doesn't uh, probably web is, is the best we have. But I wonder if we could have uh, ask our users, uh, hey, what do you think? So, okay, I, I just want to remind you, Andrea, if you remember about 10 years ago, the UK government asked for suggestions for the new Antarctic uh, exploration vehicle, and the winner by several hundreds of thousands was HMS Boaty McBoatface. So it, be careful what you wish for when you ask people what their suggestions are. It's, it's, not, it's not mandatory to follow. Uh, no, no. <laughs> I think they called it the David Attenborough up, instead. But <laughs> if somebody comes up with the new ideas, I yeah. Know, but web, I, I think web is the best we can. I agree with you there, yes. Yes, uh, Fabio. Yeah, no, I agree. I actually love that. I had created a uh, Google form for surveying some, some of those things and PyScript never really put in practice, but I had that. I, so I'm, I'm meaning I love for us to ask our users, but we had the chicken and egg problem too. We need to ship this, right? Like, so. I, I keep thinking, oh, well, should we go just with PyWeb and put like a big disclaimer, this is an experimental interface and might change uh, in the next release or whatever, or maybe we put in, I don't know, PyScript.future, something like this, where we park some of those things while you ask the users, um, pretty much like when you import future from future in Python. Um, I don't have the answer, but I, I think one, we should ship it somehow and web is the best option. Two, uh, I still really think we should ask our users somehow with surveys and whatnot. Yeah, I what you just said in the last ten seconds, uh, we should ship it under PyScript.web, uh, is perfect, and we should ask our users what they think and make it very clear with the release is is a good thing. Um, I'm hoping Fabio, you're going to say okay. Leave it with me. It'll be done for tomorrow and. Uh, <laughs> And so we, yeah. we can we can oh. release the other thing I was going to say, just as an aside, releasing a version of PyScript is very, as you know, is very easy to do. And there are certain things, for example, the Py worker class that we're still working on that I, I am pretty confident we're going to have at least one more uh, release, at least in June, um, quite soon. So, you know, we should be fearless in, in, in pushing out releases, um, really. Um, so, you know, don't let that hold you back as well if you think um you know um we can i mean i can definitely help today fabio if you want to if you want to do that yeah, switch pair, well. yeah let's pair today um awesome I, that my yeah let's just pair um, yeah that was the plan already so and then there's the, yeah. the, and then we can look at those two things as well i just made a little note so there's the printing of the children was off and then the iteration over the thing and we can have yeah. a look at those oh, as well awesome thank you yeah yeah and uh but I really want to merge this. Yeah. Oil, but, uh, uh, yeah, so, yeah. yeah everybody <laughs> wants this merged. <laughs> this is like the little cherry on top, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, I'm not, yeah, I'm not yeah, even going to, I'm going to whisper this, Fabio. Docs. But uh, that's just, just. <laughs> yes. Have you seen the Docs PR, by the way? It's linked in the, for once I did the right thing. <laughs> okay. And I'm an idiot. My apologies. I'll go and have a look at it. <sighs> no, 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 no. It's actually, I, I referenced in the PR description, there's a link to the docs in the docs. Um, I'll have to change, of, of, of course, because we're changing things here. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. But there should be a, a PR there uh, in the docs uh, repo as well. The main thing, though, and yeah. I think I mentioned in one of the two, is we actually only have user guide docs. Uh, we we really need a, a reference. I was just going to say this. It feels to me like the um, PyScript namespace docs needs to be not just a, that needs to now be the API docs, which is their own top level, and we can then split them in, in, as as we need to. But this is just refactoring of the docs, um, really. Which yeah. We well, I think we need to add. I think both things serve a different purpose and they're good, right? Like a user guide with examples and how you use it and yeah. then the reference for more detail. Yeah, 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 exactly. That, we're saying the same thing. Yeah, definitely. Absolutely. Um, but yeah. at the moment, it's in the wrong... It, it, it started off nice and small 
where it is, but it's grown. So that tells us it needs to be moved out into that that like that reference uh, API thing. Okay, yeah. I'm I'm just conscious of the time because we've okay. been over uh, here over an hour. Um, Martin, sorry. I just just put something in the, the TLDR at the bottom. The winner is is so is it PyScript.web.dom, PyScript.web.elements? Was that what we decided? Yes. That's for me. That works for me. Okay. I just want to get it in the in the agenda. Just what what the agreement was, so it was written down. Yeah. Perfect. Perfect. Okay. Uh, I can see that, that the time. You know, we we're we're way over way 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 over time. Um. Uh, any last comments? Because uh, if there are, please make them quick. Otherwise, yes. Uh, Just for you, Nicholas and Andrea. Salutatemi tutti da Milano tomorrow. Okay. Yeah. I, I think that means eat lots of pasta and uh, have a nice big glass of wine. So I'm I'm up for that. <laughs> maybe, maybe after. The... <laughs> after. <laughs> That would be a very entertaining video to watch, though, I can tell you. Um, <laughs> OK, so I'm just going to stop the video now.